Worried about the impact a full-scale assault on Rafah could mean for one million Palestinians sheltering there, the president is drawing his hardest line yet when it comes to supporting Israel. We're going to continue to make sure Israel is secure in terms of Iron Dome and their ability to respond to attacks like came out of the, uh, in, out of the Middle East recently. But it's, uh, it's, it's just wrong. We're not, going to, we're not going to supply the weapons and the artillery shells used. The U.S. delayed sending 3,500 bombs that the president acknowledged played a part in killing Gaza civilians. The administration continues to push for a ceasefire deal and not an all-out invasion of the city. Republicans slam the threat. What the president is doing here is capitulating because of electoral politics, because he's concerned about the vote in Michigan and Minnesota. It's totally pro-Hamas. I mean, he may as well just say that we're going to abandon Israel and they're no longer our ally. While the decision is splitting progressive and pro-Israel Democrats. It's a good step forward. I think we've got to do even more. When they see America pulling back, even in the slightest, right, that is a message to Hamas of, we don't have to agree to a ceasefire. Israeli forces began military operations outside the city earlier this week. Israeli officials appeared angered on social media following the warning. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reposted this video Thursday. If Israel is forced to stand alone, Israel will stand alone. The former president called the warning a disgrace on his way into court. If any Jewish person voted for Joe Biden, they should be ashamed of themselves. He's uh, totally abandoned Israel. New York Democratic Congressman Richie Torres went a step further on social media, saying Biden's warning was mixed messaging and made a mockery of our credibility as an ally. It highlights how complicated the Israel war is for the president's base. Reporting in Washington, I'm Matt Gelka.